Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening, everyone. Well, first tonight, it has been an astonishing day in Tasmanian politics. Labor leader Rebecca White revealed she asked David O'Byrne to resign at an emergency meeting last night. David O'Byrne has declared his intentions to stay on. And in a shock move, a different MP quit, labelling the environment in the party as toxic. It's a resignation no one saw coming at the start of the day. There's got to be virtue in politics, but I just can't see it. And for that reason, I've decided to resign. Dr Bastian Seidel stepping down at the end of the year, labelling the environment in the Labour Party as toxic. Politics of it all, you know, the nastiness, this is terrible, absolutely terrible. Um, and it's got to stop. The Upper House member says the handling of allegations against David O'Byrne played a part in his decision. Last night, members of the PLP held an emergency meeting to discuss Mr O'Byrne's future. Today, revealing Labor leader Rebecca White formally asked him to resign. It had been my hope that we wouldn't be having this conversation with you today, that David would have already done the honourable thing and resigned, both for him and also for the Labor Party. Saying while the investigation into his conduct found it didn't breach Labor Party policy, his behaviour fell below the standard she expects from her members, acknowledging the impact it's having on the party. Prohibiting us from talking about the sorts of things we need to be in Budget Week by holding the government to account. Pressure continuing to mount throughout the day. Two former Labor premiers voicing their concerns in an unprecedented move, calling on him to do the honourable thing and quit. There has been an absolute wall of silence in regards to this issue. It has been a situation where we have re-traumatised a victim who has lived with this incidents that have occurred to her for 15 or so years. The Labor Party will recover. It's a very resilient organisation. Right now it's going through troubled times and it needs to confront its demons. We need to rid the party of this view that it's that David O'Byrne's behaviour is acceptable. David O'Byrne leaving a party meeting this afternoon before announcing in a statement he would not be resigning from Parliament. He says, I intend to remain a member of the Labor Party and continue in my role for the next four years. Regrettably, I will therefore no longer be a part of the state Labor caucus. And our political reporter Meg Sides joins us now from Parliament. Meg, what happens now? Good evening, Kim. Well, it certainly has been an extraordinary day in Tasmanian politics. Parliament does return tomorrow and David O'Byrne is expected to make a more comprehensive statement then. But in his statement today, he said the situation has become untenable. I still believe remaining in Parliament and giving voice to the many issues confronting everyday Tasmanians is not only important but crucial in making a positive difference. Now, the move doesn't necessarily make him an independent as he is still technically a member of the Labor Party, so all eyes will be on him tomorrow morning when he takes his seat in Parliament. But Kim, with the budget being handed down on Thursday, this internal conflict is certainly not what the Labor Party would want the public focusing on at this stage. Well, anticipation is bubbling ahead of the biggest weekend in Tasmanian football history. Launceston's AFL Finals doubleheader is being branded a massive coup. One match sold out in less than 90 minutes, while accommodation bookings are also filling up fast. Thousands of fans, two AFL elimination finals, one historic Tasmanian first. Oh, mate, it's bloody good. This guy gives us a bit of focus around the country, which therefore gives us a chance to get our own side, which would be awesome. Launceston's Utah Stadium, the backdrop for back-to-back do-or-die clashes, the Swans v Giants on Saturday and the Bulldogs and Bombers on Sunday. I haven't seen this in the final for a very long time. Been waiting since 2004. Down here, it's, it's awesome. It's great. Crowd numbers will be capped at 10,000 for both days and all fans will be required to wear a mask. It triggered a frenzied grab for tickets this afternoon. We want to see good football. We've been saying that for some time. The best teams and now we've got four of the best teams, an elimination final, so what more can we ask? Hotels, cafes and retail also tipped to fill the economic injection. Demand for rooms at the Grand Hotel surged hours after yesterday's announcement. Since last night we're looking at about 30% occupancy and then this morning we woke up to about 97. 
A huge coup, ironically thanks to COVID, as Victoria and New South Wales struggled to contain growing outbreaks. The fear these matches could become an infection risk here, however, is minimal, according to the state government. Footballers will travel to Tasmania through sterile corridors to protect again our state. But some locals are sceptical. They're talking about having, what, 10,000 people, something like that. Yeah, I don't know that it's a great idea. The doubleheader costing the state coffers a million dollars. The decision to overlook Blunston Arena has certainly sparked some anger amongst Hobart football fans. But the reality is keeping broadcast equipment at one end of the state for back-to-back -back matches is a much cheaper and easier option for the AFL. Though it may not be the last big match for the year, with reports the league has made reservations at Launceston Hotels for next weekend too. Garth Burley, 7 Tasmania News. Pharmacists are calling for the vaccine rollout to be halted to allow those under 60 to receive the AstraZeneca shot in community chemists. It comes as the state's vaccination blitz has ramped up with the first group of college students receiving jabs. Some of our youngest residents today armed themselves in the fight against COVID-19. I really just wanted to get vaccinated and make sure that the community is as safe as possible. So I can help be part of getting society back to normality. Um, I know it's affected, the lockdowns and the restrictions have affected a lot of people that I know. Year 11 and 12 students at Elizabeth College were the first to receive their shots as part of the state government's school vaccine program. We've had a really good vibe this morning. We've had um, the students coming through. We're making it as relaxed um, and anxiety free as we can. Information is being sent to parents about the special clinics ahead of the visits. We have encouraged our students to discuss with their families the vaccine and to sign the consent forms together. I know that a lot of people who will be getting it would have otherwise not been able to and I think uh, doing this program through the schools has made it a lot more accessible. The clinics will continue at colleges across the state over the coming months with those in the north and northwest to begin next month. Meanwhile, a week into the pharmacy rollout, the Guild says around 500 doses of the AstraZeneca shot have been administered. There's around about 10,000 or 11,000 doses in pharmacies at the moment of the AstraZeneca vaccine in Tasmania. So we're hoping obviously to use all of those by, um, by the end of November. Pharmacists would like to see their rollout extended to include under 60s. I'd love to have it in place uh, just in case there is an outbreak. So at the moment if there was an outbreak we can't respond quickly enough to assist a number of people who would be then legible for the vaccination. They're also looking forward to providing the option of the Moderna vaccine. I think it's going to be a really good option for a number of people um, that maybe Pfizer or AstraZeneca is inappropriate for. Once Moderna comes on board, I think pharmacy can be a go-to place for vaccination in Tasmania. Letitia Wallace, 7 Tasmanian News. Business groups and unions have made their final pitch ahead of the state budget later this week. But the Premier's planned return to surplus will be delayed by another year as the state continues to grapple with the effects of COVID-19. Unlocking 6,000 hectares of land to help address Tasmania's housing crisis. To help uh, prompt the release of land that's currently zoned residential, but we want it released. The government again has its sights set on big infrastructure projects ahead of handing down its eighth budget on Thursday. But to stimulate the economy in a time of global crisis, the building and construction industry wants greater certainty to help recruit more skilled workers into the future. We now need to just see Infrastructure Tasmania um, put out a really clear strategy of how they're going to spend that and so we don't end up with a boom-bust cycle into the future and that we have a really long-term plan. The RACT echoing their calls, requesting the state government help pave the way for safer roads. The uh, Bass Highway, the Ewan Highway, the Tasman Highway, uh, certainly the Lyle Highway, uh, if all of those have achievable, well-funded 10-year plans, then we will, we will get safer roads. 
Investing in health and education again on the union's wish list. We need to see additional nurses and midwives and we need to see additional resourcing and we need to ensure that we keep our Tasmanian graduates here in Tasmania. We need to make sure that the government actually looks at what the wage is across the country so that we can actually attract those teachers and maintain our best and brightest students that are doing our university courses. This will be the government's second budget handed down during the pandemic with the Premier already conceding his goal of reaching net surplus will be delayed by another year as the state rebounds out of COVID-19. Ainsley Kosh, 7 Tasmania News. A 30-year-old man has been charged after allegedly breaking into a home in Karula yesterday morning and attacking a 64-year-old man, leaving him with a significant head injury. He's also accused of assaulting a 28-year-old woman who did not require treatment. Police are still looking for another accused offender. Environmental protesters have dressed as marine life on Hobart streets and they're calling on Huon Aquaculture to dump a $540 million takeover plan by global meat giant JBS. The new group, Action for Coastal Tasmania, believes the environmental standards will slip under Brazilian ownership. They're urging shareholders of the salmon giant to vote against the proposal. The University of Tasmania will be aiming to boost the local allied health workforce with its new Master of Speech Pathology degree. Until now, those wanting to study the specialised subject had to move into state for qualifications. A speech pathology program in Tasmania is something that the industry has been looking for for a really long time. Um, we've found it really difficult to recruit and retain speech pathologists. Moving into state was one of the biggest limitations in building the, um, the speech pathology um, workforce here in Tasmania. It was a real um, issue for individuals who are interested in, in, in taking on this career path. The first cohort for the course will join in August next year. And here are the final votes in the Crips TSL Player of the Year. Six goals to Colin Garland capped off his day with three votes. Brad Cox Goodger had another fine outing, three votes against Glenorchy. And the deciding game, Brodie Powfreeman claimed the maximum, but Jay Blackbury also polled, meaning the Launceston veteran is the Player of the Year on 22 votes, clear of teammate Jake Hines on 20. North Launceston's Jay Foon, Brad Cox Goodger, and Michael Stingle round out the top five. Jay Blackbury now has his own slice of history. An outstanding final outing on a heavy Windsor Park saw him pole clear of Jake Hines. Yeah, it would have been really nice to, to be able to share it with Hinesy. Um, I think that would have been really fitting with the season he's had as well. But um, as long as one of us won it, I didn't really care who it was. The accolade comes in the same year Blackbury broke the TSL's all-time games record. The standout season hints the 29-year-old is only just reaching his peak. I don't think I've really ever got close to anything like this. Bittersweet for the league's leading goal kicker, Dylan Riley's 59 majors was nearly double the next closest on the tally, but Riley isn't part of Launceston's finals push after cruelly injuring his ACL. When it happened I was down a little bit but then you get over a little bit but coming into the finals is uh, sitting in the, in the box watching is a bit difficult. Riley's highlight booting his first 10 goal haul in senior football against North Hobart in round four. And the Blues' clean sweep was sealed with Cooper Warren named leading goal kicker in the development league. Been wanting to play seniors my whole life. So hopefully next year I can play a senior game and maybe play in the Devils program. After weeks of dead rubbers for the Blues, the minor premier can now go for back to back crowns. The weekend was nice, got through it. Everyone's feeling good and um, I think everyone's pretty pumped that this time of year is finally here. Tasmanian triathlete Cameron Wirth has taken out the Ironman Copenhagen, smashing the bike and course records in the process. After coming out of the swim more than five minutes off the pace, Wirth stormed into the lead on the bike, covering the 180km leg in just over four hours. The superhuman effort wound up with the fifth fastest time in the marathon run, the Tasmanian crossing the line three minutes clear of the next fastest. His crowning glory accompanied by an Earth, Wind and Fire classic. Cam being conservative. Hey, Joe. Look at the heel lift, Welsh. Make some noise for Cameron Wurf! I haven't hurt like that for a while. I think, um, uh, yeah, I think I was lucky I had the, um, the red and, you know, the red and white, the Danish colours, so I think it gave me a bit of an extra lift <laughs> there in the run.
Great to see him singing along. Worth will have to wait until February though for the famous Kona Ironman in Hawaii to take place after it was postponed over the weekend. His best result was a fifth placing in 2019. Good evening everyone. Temperatures above average today with Launceston reaching 16 degrees, 15 in Devonport, Burnie 14 and 13 in Hobart. St Helens, the state's top of 17 degrees today. Friendly Beaches 15, 14 on Flinders Island, King Island, Low Head and Bushy Park all 13 and 5 in Liawini. Little to no cloudy seen about the north coast today but cloudy conditions can be seen over the remainder of the state. Further out, mid to low level cloud can be seen about the west and south of Tasmania as well as western Victoria and southern South Australia. Cloud associated with thunderstorms sits through central Queensland. Tomorrow's chart shows a cold front brushing the south of Tasmania, followed by a ridge that extends from a high pressure system near the Bight. South to southwesterly winds tomorrow, 15 to 20 knots, reaching up to 25 knots in the northeast during the morning. Swells 4 to 5 metres in the west and south. And there is a strong wind warning current for northeastern coastal waters from the northern tip of Flinders Island to St Helens Point. A minor flood warning is current for the North Esk and Meander Rivers and a road weather alert for all forecast districts for icy roads. Late showers and 13 in Hobart and Adventure Bay tomorrow, 8 in Taralea. Launceston and Devonport both 13 with morning frosts, 13 degrees in Bridport. Partly cloudy and 13 in Burnie tomorrow, Strawn reaching 12, Marawar 11 with developing showers. And in the east, 13 are mostly sunny in St Helens, 15 in Swansea and mostly sunny and 12 in Whitemark. Looking on to Wednesday, fine apart from possible light showers about the east and south. Those showers continuing on Thursday with areas of morning frost, fine elsewhere. And on Friday, light showers about the east, south and central areas. Sunny and 22 in Perth tomorrow, 14 in Adelaide, rain in Canberra, Brisbane 22 and a shower or two and 33 in Darwin. And currently Hobart mostly cloudy and 7 degrees, partly cloudy and 8 in Launceston and clear in Devonport and 9 there. That's all in weather tonight, Kim. Thank you very much, Chelsea, and that is all your news for now. I'll be back later with some updates. Thanks for joining us. Good night.